For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh, my last name is Todd, but that was just changed about 60 years ago. Until then, our name was Collins. And the Collins family, my direct tree, was responsible, according to witchcraft history and a few history books that I can find also, with bringing witchcraft to the United States. Long plagued our family. Witches, ghosts, and vampires. Myths. The Collins family is odd. <laughs> David, this is Vicky, your new governess. All right. It's gonna scare her. Vicky, she's had quite a troubled past. Welcome to Collinwood. They're in hit hard times and they don't seem to get out much. Elizabeth Collins, she is the matriarch of the family. There are only seven of us after all. My brother Roger and I, and Dr. Hoffman. I'm a resident psychiatrist in a strange household. And my daughter Carolyn. She's one of the weirdest in the family. Carolyn touches herself. She makes noises like a kitten. No one really likes each other. <laughs> What's that? Barnaby, maybe. One of the real important ones from way back. Barnabas Collins was cursed by a witch. By a witch. After being locked in a box for 200 years, and he, and he arrives back at Collinwood. He's coming. What the? Like what? a highly, highly dysfunctional family. <laughs> I am terribly sorry. I cannot imagine how thirsty I am. Then enter a 200-year-old vampire. So uh, when I was 14, and some of you might consider that a very early age, but it wasn't. It was kind of a late age for this. I was initiated into organized witchcraft. In other words, I was made what Brother Rasmussen is. I was made a pastor, a minister. I was ordained. In fact, a few years later when I went to enlist in the service, I didn't have to go because I was draft exempt because I was the ordained minister of a legal recognized church. So, uh, 4D status for a few people who know what that is. I'm sure Brother Rasmussen does. Ordained ministers are exempt. And uh, I enlisted and went through the service until uh, I got into a little shooting incident in uh, uh, Germany, after I'd come back from Vietnam, I'd re-enlisted and went to Germany. And uh, I was getting ready to be court-martialed. In fact, I had everything down pat. I was as good as gone. Uh, we had entered a plea of guilty yeah, for a uh, deal of 35 years and then parole, and they wouldn't even consider it. An officer had been killed in the situation, and I was more or less just waiting to be transferred to Leavenworth to serve the time when, uh, you know, Witchcraft Church, which I thought was just a little group of people that I belonged to, sent a political member of that church, a state senator, two of them, state senator, a uh, U.S. senator, and a representative over to Germany, and they took hold of the situation, and 24 hours later I was a civilian in the United States with all my time, rank, and an honorable discharge, and my court-martial records didn't exist anymore. We tell them it's the spirits of the dead. They tell them everything but what it is. And I was supposed to be a high priest leading a church of, uh, that had 13 ministers to it plus a couple hundred people in his congregation. And I believe this. And then all of a sudden for six months, this man, Dr. Buckland, unraveled everything and told me there was a one God where before we believed there was four. There was one and his name was Lucifer. And he was very quickly to tell me that wasn't Satan. He didn't want me to get any ideas that Christians could be telling me the truth. I should have thought then that if he had lied, they had lied to me for almost uh, 18 years, they were probably lying to me now. And But I went ahead and believed it, and for six months I took lessons in witchcraft that I didn't even know that things could happen that had happened. And then I was transferred to Los Angeles, good old L.A., can't seem to get away from it. And for six months my foster mother taught me something that your pastor is very familiar with the political situation of the occult. And all of a sudden I realized that witchcraft wasn't just spell casting, it had a purpose in mind. And that's when I started getting a little afraid because when I was 10, as I said, I learned a little about the Bible. It just happened to be all revelations that I learned. 
and all of a sudden we were discussing a world ruler that would be personally guided by Lucifer that could gain control of the world supernaturally and take control of people's minds. Of course, they didn't say there was a defense against this. The way they spoke, everybody was affected. They didn't say anything about the blood of Jesus. But uh, we sat there and for six months I learned the political structure and the history of witchcraft. And then I was taken to Colorado and I was placed through an initiation into the sixth realm. And this initiation consisted of a blood sacrifice. It consisted of a blood sacrifice. And from then on I was given a territory of 13 states. This didn't happen to be one of them. This belonged to my foster mother but I was in charge of all the occult, political, and drug activity in 13 states. And this is where I was in 1972 when I met the Lord. Well, I, at first, for many years, said by accident, but I've come to realize there's no such thing as an accident when it comes to Jesus. He had everything perfectly planned out. I was the manager of Zodiac Productions, which Zodiac Productions name has been changed since then. I'm not even sure what they call it now, but it's the largest music conglomerate in the world. It owns RCA Records, Columbia Records, Motown Records, it owns almost all the concert booking agencies in the United States. And that's not even the, the name of the company that owns it. The name of the company that owns it is Brenner Enterprises, and Brenner Enterprises is owned by Chase Manhattan. Chase Manhattan is owned by Standard Oil, and Standard Oil is owned by the Lords of London. You can track it all back. You kind of get the idea after a while. But I was the managing president of Zodiac Productions. It was one of my jobs as being one of these 13 people. Thus, I got to know many of the people who produce music and sing the music and play the music that you play. Now, one of the closest friends that I got during that time that I obtained was a man named David Crosby. Crosby still Nash and Young. I saw David the day before Christmas last year. Talked with him. I got him away from this witch that he had with him. He told her to go shopping. We were in West Hollywood and I was witnessing around to people I knew. We went off in this store and we started talking. I said, David, I'd like to ask you a couple questions. I said, I already know the answers, but I've been gone for five years. I'd like to know if certain things are still the way they were when I left. I said, do they, now I'll have to explain some of this when I'm done, but you're not going to understand it all unless you know something about music. I said, do they still take the master to the temple room? Dave said, yeah. I said, do they still have the coven conjure demons into the master. He said, of course. I said, now, i got to know something. What's the main reason for rock music? He said, come on, Lance, you know what the reason is. I said, please, David, I don't want to guess. Tell me what the main reason is. He said, the same as when you were in, so that we can place spells on people that we couldn't cast spells upon. I'll explain what that means in a minute. I said, okay, one last thing. I've been hearing that you must be an initiated witch now to get a record contract. He said, that's right. He says, many of us that weren't total witches have to be witches now in order to produce music. Said, Thank you. The master is a tape about as big as the top of this podium that looks like an overgrown 8-track that the album is cut on and is placed in a machine that produces and presses the records and the 8-tracks and cassettes that you buy. After it's been recorded, it's taken in. This is why a master is cut months in advance before it's released. On the full moon, it's taken in to a temple room about the size of this auditorium that is in every one of the major music companies behind locked doors up in the executive office and it's placed on an altar sitting in the north of the room and a pentagram engraved in the floor and 13 hand chosen witches and witch wizards and a coven come in and conjure a principality or a power up usually Regia or something like that and order him to tell the demons under him to follow every record and every tape coming off of that master. As I tell many Christian parents, you can go home and count your kids' records, probably yours too, and count how many demons at least are there. If that's too hard for you to believe, I'm sorry. That's why they do it. Now listen to me. This is why rock music is addicting. Have you ever seen kids that got rid of their music? They go around like this. They can't wait to find a rock station somewhere and they sneak off just like getting a cigarette or a fix because it's addicting. That's why they can't give it up. The rest of the conversation was this. You can't cast a spell on a Christian, but you can get a Christian to cast a spell on themselves. If you give the permission for the spell to work, being a Christian won't block it. And rock music is not just a song. It is supernatural music 
that which is carefully designed by their spirit guides or familiar spirits in the form of spells. Now although the devil's music par is the music and God's music is the words, much of the songs are written in what we call witch language. Give you kind of an idea. You talk, on, many of you talk on the CB, unless you know what, you, what a smoky is, and uh, a tin four, and uh, uh, a front door and back door and rocking chair and these type of things, you don't know what you're talking about. Same with witches. When you're in the first or second level, you have to learn over 2,000 words that said by anybody else means something totally different than when you say them. Elton John has said he's never written a song or sung a song that wasn't in which language. Now I want to show you something. See how many kids in here will be honest and adults. How many remember and have heard at least several times a song called Hotel California? Somebody tell me what it meant. Quickly, somebody tell me what it meant. Huh? That's pretty close. But from the words, what did it mean? Well, that's more of a guess. See, most people can't tell you. That's why when people do drugs and they listen to songs in which language, they get some of the meaning. But most of the time, they can't tell you. Stop and think how many songs are out there that you really like, and you don't have any idea what the person was talking about. Beyond the Yellow Brick Road? How about The Destroyer by Kiss? Can anybody tell me what it's about? Kiss said in it, kids, tell your parents. They're talking about Helder Skelter. Beatles sung Helder Skelter in which language nobody knew what it meant. Manson did because he belongs to the process. Helder Skelter is a several, several thousand year old word. Most of the music is either about Helder Skelter or a place called the Night Winds, which is what Hotel California is about, and different doctrines of witchcraft. You listen to them, your parents let you listen to them, and they have no idea. Kids openly bragged how they were gaining control of people through their music because the people played their music. They told how they didn't form their own group. Their church, because they were ordained ministers of the Satanist church, placed them together. And that's how most of the music is done. David Crosby, when him and Crosby still nice and young, produced the record 283. They ordered the Principality of Medea to order demons of rebellion to go into the record and everybody that heard it would be rebellious against law and order and government. And it was one of the reasons for the great upheaval in the 60s was that one album. And they take open credit for it. Initiated to the sixth level or grand druid position of witchcraft, I sat on a council of 13 people that take orders only from the Rothschild Tribunal in London, which they claim they take their orders directly from Lucifer. And that's why they reside. Somebody's asking me if some of the Rothschilds live in California. Not those directly related to the tribunal. They won't leave England. Some live in France, but they always come over to England because they believe that England is the place that Lucifer is most fluent and can speak to them more in person than he could anywhere else. And from talking to Christians in England, they estimate there's only 2% of the population are Christians in the uh, Great Britain country. So uh, they have quite a fluent time over there. In fact, some friends of mine just brought pictures back of where they're building homes with broomstick poles coming out of the chimney for the witch spirits to land on to bless their homes. These aren't ignorant people. These are the new million dollar mansions that are going in. It's not just a superstition. The country has really gone back to witchcraft. try to rationalize it good or bad. It's bad. Now, I want to give you an incident that will kind of sum it up. I did meet most of them. Most of them were in the occult, but most of them were on drugs. Now, I want to say something real quick here. How many remember a group called Bloodstone, or Blood Rock, I think it was? DOA, the song DOA. They did this song while they were on acid. They got the words. I talked to the guy. He said a demon. Well, he didn't call it a demon. He called it a spirit of this girl that he knew that had died in a car accident. It was a demon impersonating the girl. Appeared to him and gave him during this acid trip the notes, the words, and everything. They filed it with a copyright lawyer. The day after the copyright lawyer filed it, another group came in that was well known at that time and filed the same song, note for note, word for word. And when I was in the occult, I thought it was interesting enough to check it up because I wrote for an occult newspaper and I put the story in the paper. They got it the same way, on an acid trip, the same night, from a demon in a, imitating a spirit of somebody they had known that had died. Most rock musicians get their music while on drugs or from spirit guides, which are demons. Or from spirit guides, which are demons. That's what the, your young people are buying and paying for. Now, I'll give you something supernatural you can file away if you don't want to receive it or take it home and, and get in the Word and see if it's possible. 
when witches write a book, they cast a spell over the book so it'll sell. And they order a demon to go into every copy that comes off the press. So when you own a book on witchcraft, you have a demon residing in your home, free of charge. The musicians who do the music that are in witchcraft do the same thing to the record album. The same thing. So when you see that friendly little album spinning on your thing, ask yourself, was the musician a witch? Did he cast a spell over the album that the devil would have a pact in my home because I own the records? Christians, leave it alone. Is the Aleister Crowley library where he was involved in human sacrifice and he was a master magician or witch or wizard, whatever term they want to use. So it does go on. And in fact, to become a sixth level witch, you must perform it. It's just like when they, they tell, now this is for the women, not the men. When they tell the young girls getting into witchcraft that homosexuality has nothing to do with witchcraft. In order to become a high priest, the girl must be bisexual. She must perform a bisexual act. So see, every level you go to, they tell you a different story. And they tell you that people below aren't ready to receive it yet. And so every step you go up the ladder, everything you've been told before is a lie, and all of a sudden you learn new truth. The only type of witches that are kind of ignorant, and there are a couple of them here today, are the self-proclaimed witches. was saved in a meeting a few years after I was saved, and she, her title was Lady Diana. That was her witch name. She was the state high priestess. She ruled everything in the state of Ohio that was in witchcraft. She was also the witch queen of one of the denominational brotherhood, the Watchers. On a scale in this country of maybe 1 to 25, she was probably the 10 most powerful witch in the United States for my salvation. And she has close to $50,000 on her head because she's come out, not because she's married me, just because she got saved. And we took her into a rehabilitation ministry, and then later we started dating and were married and so on. But uh, she does a fine ministry. Right now she's just about ready to deliver a baby. She thinks she might even have it today. So uh, she's not exactly ministering lately. Yeah. No. Okay. Uh, let me take about five minutes here. The question is, is human sacrifice practiced in witchcraft? I have to be kind of careful since a police officer is present here without incriminating myself or something, but uh, The Broken Cross was written by myself and Jack Chick. When it was reproduced, the guy who was doing the wording in the book, you know, writing our story form out, changed a few words he thought were stronger. He changed the word witchcraft to Satanism a couple places, and he changed the word Lucifer to Satan. That messed up the book. We didn't catch it until just recently, all these years. I've been reading just kind of skipping over it because it means the same thing in my mind. But when a witch who doesn't believe in Satan reads it, it blows the whole thing. Since it wasn't written on Satanism, it was written on witchcraft. So the next printing coming out, they're changing the words back the way they're supposed to be. Satanism practices a form of, of sacrifice in some groups. Witches practice it more. To the everyday witch, that's a lie, I'm telling you. There's a few witches here in the congregation tonight that I know. Yeah. But there's a few here also that are in the human sacrifice, and they know I'm not lying. And when you get up into a higher level, fourth, fifth, or sixth, you find out that the power rests with blood sacrifice. The power rests with blood sacrifice. You become what is called a human challenge. In other words, you are proving to Satan through the blood and the death of this person that you are sold totally out to him, although they don't believe in things. You're proving it to Lucifer. You're proving it to Lucifer. Okay, y'all. What's going on? It's Black Balloon, and that was a John Todd video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Um, you know, as you could kind of see, I kind of, you know, just kept it um, centered, centered around, you know, mostly witchcraft and um, the music industry. Of course, that was um, mostly tapes and recordings from um, the early 70s to the late 70s. I don't think it was out of that decade um, that he did most of those recordings since um, he was obviously uh, locked up, I think, sometimes in the, sometimes in the 80s. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to kind of keep it centered around, you know, one topic so it could kind of be, you know, relatable, um, in a way, you know, and uh, of course there's, um, there's plenty more recordings of him talking about just 
I guess everything that he tried to expose about witchcraft on YouTube. So, you know, if, if, you know, some of y'all never heard of John Todd, you know, you could go back and just, um, search up some of those, some of those recordings and just listen to them because they are, um, they, they, they are kind of shocking. You'll, you'll definitely learn a lot. Um, if you don't know of John Todd, I know a lot of y'all know about John Todd because I got a few of y'all that asked to do a video, um, on John Todd since I did that Bill Cooper video and, um, they they both had a lot of the same beliefs, you know. So you can um, you can tell that these weren't, you know, two guys that were just making up shit and you know, being um, claimed as American conspiracy theorists, you know, or whatever that is, you know. So um, and 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 it's crazy because a lot of the things that John Ty talked about with the music industry, I talked about as well on this channel, like. You know, um, y'all could go back down my channel like 10, 11 months ago, and I got a video where I was talking about channeling spirits in the music industry. And I specifically talked about, um, I specifically talked about, you know, how, um, basically how the music is, is, is so strong. It has, you know, it has uh these really these really strong spirits attached to them that basically it could it could tap into your subconscious without you even listening to a full minute of the song and i was that was back when I used to always make videos when I was walking outside and shit, and I was you know just um just broke that whole thing down somewhat you know about how um you know spirits follow the music and how the frequencies and stuff in the music is so strong that it grabs your subconscious without you even paying attention to it. You know, one of my examples was like, you know, you could be with a friend going into a store that's playing music, or you could just actually walk past that store that's playing music, and your subconscious will grab a hold of that frequency. And just a few minutes later, you're wondering why that song is stuck in your head. You know what I'm saying? And it's just kind of an example of how powerful the frequencies grab a hold to your subconscious. So that relates back to, you know, um, demon spirits being attached to the music so the music can sell it all, you know, it all relates to each other because we wouldn't really, you know, besides frequency and sound of music in itself, you know, it wouldn't grab a hold of us the way it does without these spirits being attached to the music and it's the same way you know i wanted to do that um show those clips where he was talking about rock music and all that stuff i wanted to make sure i got that in there because it's the same way with rap today it's the same way you know as far as back masking when they hide sub uh, subliminal messages within the songs you know um the way songs are written you know which is um a major reason why and especially R&B, most R&B artists, they don't write their own music. You know, a lot of rappers don't write their own music as well. But it goes to show you that the witch language thing is true. That's why a lot of them actually don't write the music. It's written by, you know, um, certified witches and warlocks who know how to write music in that language. And I actually talked about that way back down my channel as well. You know, so... Um, it just it goes to show you that the words that we we can I said I it's crazy I said that the words that we can be using every single day, um and you know I mean the words that we're both using as far as these witches and warlocks and us regular, you know humans, <laughs> us regular people, you know we can be using the same words but when it come out of their mouth it's a completely different meaning than when it comes out of our mouth. And that's why I always talk about intentions as well, because we have intentions. We're just saying shit. We're just we just talking. They have negative intentions behind it. They're trying to cast spells with these words. And when you put that energy into that process, basically, that's what comes out of it. You see what I'm saying? So that's how, you know, we can say the same damn things, sing along to the same damn words. But, you know, in our minds, we're just singing a song in their mind. They're casting spells through which language. So it all makes sense. And it's all still done to this day. You would be a fool to think, you know, it's not because that's basically um, what rap and, you know, trap and all that shit is today. Trap music and shit is the same as what rock was back then. You know what I'm saying? All it does is invoke spirits and shit 
into your life without you even knowing. You know what I'm saying? Y- y'all already know. You know what I'm saying? You you go all the way back to crime mob. You go back to all these shits that, you know, back when when trap was really starting and shit. You know what I'm saying? These songs that make you want to fight in the club. You know, still to this day, songs that make you want to shoot shit up when Chief Keef was, was blowing up. You know what I'm saying? All these basically heavily demonic ass songs that literally change your entire being. Like, you'll go from just chilling and now you want to really shoot some shit up. Like, you throwing up your set. You doing all kind of shit. Because this song just literally changed, you know, your frequency. It, it it tuned you. Like, literally, how you tune a radio, the song just tuned you. It just tuned your mood. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, that's how powerful, you know, um, spirits and frequencies are that, like, reside in the music. You know, and and it's very true. Um, I brought that fact up as well. It's just crazy. It's hitting me because I literally talked about this, that the fact that albums are turned in two months in advance so they can basically do rituals and spells around the music. It all goes back to when I was saying things about how certain artists channel spirits you know, to help them become as big as they are, you know, how people fall out in front of artists. And I was saying that that's not natural. It's it's spiritual when someone passes out because of excitement, you know, a spirit grabbed a hold of their heart, literally. Um, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's, it's all, it's all basically the same process, you know, as far as them attaching um, spirits onto the albums and shit you know, two months in advance before it's put out, because that's how these things work. They use a pentagram to invoke the spirits, you know, because basically, y'all know when you use that pentagram, you can invite spirits into the into the physical world just within that little space. You need the pentagram to actually do it. You know, so um, like I said, it just, it all, you know, it all ties together as far as, you know, everything he was talking about. So once again, you know, I felt like I should, that was the major focal point of the video as far as music and spells, because it's the most relatable to kind of what we're going through today with, you know, with trap music, you know, mostly just trap music, you know what I'm saying? Um, It does the same thing that rock music did back then, you know, Um, although back then, you know, they were more open, like, you know, damn near devil worshipers and shit, more open with it more like gruesome with it and shit, biting bat heads and all kind of shit. You know, today is still the same thing, you know, but it's more it's more of a subconscious thing, you know, because a lot of people think, you know, they can just listen to this music and do what they do and it's just rap trap, mumble, whatever, whatever they think is not affecting them when really at the end of the day, you know, <laughs> you're inviting spirits into your life. At the end of the day, it is what it is. You can listen to whatever you want to listen to, but it's best that you be aware of what you're actually partaking in because you got to know that there's a deeper, darker agenda behind it all. You know what I'm saying? Um, And you must be aware of that. You know, you must be aware of what's really going on at the top that you just, you know, you're you're not actually paying attention to because you're just being a consumer like everyone else. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and, um, you know, I'm not going to tell y'all what to listen to or what not to listen to. You make that choice on your own, you know, because music, music is music. You know what I'm saying? Um, if something makes you feel good, it makes you feel good, you know, but that's something for y'all to make, you know, a decision on your own, what you choose to invite into your life. You know, what you choose um, to invite into your mental space. So um, this is a very, very wide topic. You know, I could actually I could probably sit here and go for another 30 minutes. You know, um, if I wanted to just keep going on and on and on, I could just break this up into another part and do another, you know, another talk about just music and spells and just, you know, maybe go a little bit deeper than what we're doing right now. You know, (laughs) Um, but man, y'all already know what's going on, man. That was um, the late, great John Todd, man. Um, so I hope y'all enjoyed that video. Y'all already know what's going on. It's Black Balloon, and I'm gonna see y'all soon. I'm out.